G'day, g'day. It's Nick and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And this boy here is a rover, one of the two eastern brown snakes that call Wicked Wildlife HQ home. Now this is the second most venomous snake on the planet and the leading cause of snake bite here in Australia. And since we've just entered the season of spring, I figured it's probably high time we do a video about snake bite first aid. So stick around guys, this is a video that everybody in the country should watch because snake bite first aid might just save your life one day. Stick around. All right, so you're out in the bush, you're out on the farm, you're somewhere, and you have been bitten by a snake. What do you do? Well, step one is safety. Same with any first aid. The first thing you want to do is make sure you're safe. And in the case of a snake bite, this means getting away from the snake. You don't want to catch it, you don't want to kill it, you don't want to go near it, because Doctors do not want to look at the snake. Most doctors can't identify snakes based on appearance. You don't want to risk a second bite or your first aid are getting bitten. So get away from it, sit down, and you can begin the first aid. Step two, you want to apply compression. Here in Australia, and first aid does vary in different parts of the world with different kinds of snakes. So I do want to highlight this is here in Australia. We use a compression bandage. Now the bandages that I use some clever bloke put little rectangles on them to show you how tight to make them. But any bandage is better than nothing. So you want to start at the end of the limb. Don't ask me why, everybody says you start at the top, but every doctor, every zookeeper I know starts at snake bite first aid this way. So start at the end of the limb, fingers, toes, you want to work all the way to the top. Now, you don't want to be cutting off blood supply. It's a bit of a myth that you want to use the old tourniquet method. And the reason for this is, here in Australia, we have about 3,000 snake bites a year. About 300 people need antivenine, and between two and three die. So there's 2,700 cases a year of people being bitten by a snake and not needing antivenin. You don't want to be the guy who cuts off blood supply to your hand for three hours while you get to hospital, find out you've been bitten by a tree snake, but you've got gangrene in your hand because there's been no blood. So we don't want to do a tourniquet. We want to basically put it as tight as you would a sprained ankle. If you don't have these little compression indicators, you should be able to pinch your finger, and see color come back. The goal is not to cut off blood, it's to reduce muscle movement and reduce the movement of that lymphatic fluid through the body. So you want to keep doing this bandage all the way to the top of the limb. Now a common question I get asked about applying the compression bandage, besides how tight to do it, is should you remove clothing? And we don't want to remove clothing. The reason being is remember that venom travels lymphatically, not through our bloodstream like people imagine. And that is basically pumped by muscle movement. So the last thing we want to be doing is moving my arms around to take my shirt off or putting my arms in the air and letting gravity help push that venom down. Because what that venom wants to do is get to your lymph glands, your armpits, your groin. That's where it enters your bloodstream. The bad stuff starts happening really quickly. So straight over the top of clothing. The next thing you want to do, once you've got your compression bandage on as far as you can go, you want to mark the bite site. Pencil, pen, text it, lipstick, dirt, whatever. You want to mark the bite site. And the reason we do this is it means if you get to hospital, you're unconscious, you can't explain for any reason where the bite is, the doctor knows exactly where he's looking. Rather than taking off the bandage and letting all hell break loose, they're going to basically pull apart the bandage, get access to your skin, and this is where they can do a swab, figure out which antibenine you need, do any other ex exams that they want to do. So marking the bite site is really important. If you're able to, you can write other details, like the time you were bitten, or you know, record it on your phone, anything like that. But details are important. Marking the bite site is a great next step. You see, you've applied a compression bandage, you've recorded the bite site, any details. The next thing you should be looking to do is split whatever the affected limb is. Now, some first aid kits include a splint or something like this. You could use a stick, a rolled up newspaper, whatever. Personally, if I'm out in the bush, the most logical thing for me to do is, in the case of an arm, tie it up to my body with my belt. It's all about reducing muscle movement, which pumps that lymphatic fluid. You can even take a belt off and use it to tie somebody's legs together. Have them lie completely still, tie their legs together. It reduces that movement. It's going to slow that venom through the body. So a splint, however you do it, is going to be a very helpful addition to your snake bite first aid. So after you've applied all the immediate first aid, a bandage, a splint, things like this, it becomes time to call for help. And if at all possible, you want to bring help to the patient. And the reason for this is, We've got to remember, I've said it before, muscle movement pumps venom. So the less they move, the longer they have for help to get to them. The more they move around, the more you move that venom. So bring help to them. Now, I get a lot of people tell me, look, I live on a farm or I'm bushwalking and, and all sorts of things. And I get it. There's extenuating circumstances. But 
I used to catch snakes for a living in remote mine sites, and I've dealt with snake bite in some fairly remote areas where friends, colleagues, other people I know who have been bitten. Now, if you use a bit of forethought, you shouldn't be going out in the bush without a compression bandage because regardless of snake bite, you could sprain your ankle, you could hurt yourself doing anything. A bandage is an easy thing to carry. On top of that, you should be letting people know where you're going and when you'll be back. If you've applied this bandage this first day, you have bought yourself a good few hours for help to get to you. And I know people who have been bitten by snakes in very remote places and been flown out by things like the Flying Doctor Service. So if at all possible, bring help to the patient. So once you've called for help, applied all the first aid, really all that's left is to wait with the patient for help. And you want to keep them as calm as possible. Now look, I get it's easier said than done. I have been next to people when they've been bitten by snakes and I've been the first aider on the scene. So it's a scary prospect, but the more calm you can keep them, the more you can keep that heart rate stable, reduce muscle movement, you're vastly improving their chances of a positive outcome. And if you've done all these things properly, your chances of survival here in Australia are up over 99%. So this is something that every single person in all of Australia should learn. It should be taught in schools in my opinion, Everybody should know it. And it's important not to just rely on it the day it happens. It should be practiced. Because like I said, I have had to supply first aid to people who have been bitten by snakes. And it's not something you want to be thinking, what did that guy on YouTube two and a half years ago say? You want to know how to do it and be confident in it. The more confident you are, the more calm the patient will be. And this means that nobody in the country, nobody should ever have to die of snake bite if everybody can learn to do snake bite safely properly. So there you go guys, that's snake bite first aid in a nutshell. Practice it, memorize it, it should be something we all need to do because statistically, the one to two people a year who lose their lives to snake bite in our country either fail to provide first aid or provide first aid incorrectly. We don't want to, you know, tourniquet, bite and suck, any of these methods. It's all about compression, splint, call for help, and you are going to be okay. Now, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and check on back next week because there is lots more wildlife content coming. But between now and the next video, have a good day. Be nice to wildlife. Have a good one and take care.